Hello everyone. The Skinner Machine, we've all seen it. Came out over a decade ago. Came out in 1939, really. But this video came out April 13th, 2014. So, I've done a lot of experimenting, a lot of thought, a lot of research. And, uh,. I've solved the mystery. Nothing really breakthrough, but some little things that make the difference between overunity and uh, a colossal failure. So I'm not going to go over the theory on why it's a free energy machine, why it's overunity. Simple answer is combination of forces. That's not important. It's important that it works. So, what people are stuck on is the input. That's what gets them. We can't quite tell what is driving it, how it's set up exactly. We know it's a motor, but we don't know how it's set up. Exactly. So some people say, well, it's elliptical. Some people say, no, it's rotational. Some people say, no, it's rolling back and forth. Because it kind of looks like a little bit of each. So there's this debate. Okay. Well, what's the answer? Let's just cut to the chase. The answer is uh, all three of them. Very clearly from the photo. We do have a photo somewhere right here. It has a watermark right over the place we want to see, of course. You can see tie rod ends in the middle. It looks like tie rod ends, some kind of linkage. And these circle things, they could be gears, but they really don't look like gears. And from the video, we can see weird motion. Now, don't quite have all my ducks lined up here. So you'll have to bear with me as it will. I'll find it eventually. Here we go. So that's all we have to go on. You can see some weird movement. It looks like rods moving back and forth. And you can tell there's also the circular motion. Um, but let's not obsess over that too, too much. Um, so back to my presentation. We've seen many attempts, but no one was really successful. The most successful we had was this little model from David Query. He's done a lot of work in free energy. You can tell he's highly, highly skilled. Much more than yours, truly. Um, so he has his rocking back and forth, which is basically the same thing as Skinner's. And you can tell it's a bit tricky to get the timing right. You have to have the voltage on the motor just right so it doesn't overrun itself. Uh, everything is freely moving. Now, there is a little lever on top. Um, I have a better diagram. Let me find it. How about this one? Okay, there's like a lever here. It's a fixed lever. It seems to be directly above the weight, going the same way. You can experiment with it. And it looks like there's also an intermediate piece. So let's open up this highly technical drawing that I did. So it seems like there's an intermediate piece here. 
So what's important is the input oscillates back and forth. It's connected with tie rods and linkages. You almost have to go crazy to see it. It's where you're insane. Oops. Where'd it go? Come on. I go to back. Okay. But it's not just simple gears up there. And if it was gears, I really doubt that motor would be able to turn it. It's something with uh, um, I forget the word. It's like a delayed input. It's a dwell. Looks sort of like a dwell mechanism, which most dwell mechanisms are quite inefficient. But there does seem to be a dwell period. Maybe it's like a quick return. But the point is, is it you only want to input, you only want to move the mechanism when it's very easy. And if you time it right, you'll gain energy that way. So I got to go over to my next photo, which somewhere. Okay. Fixed lever. The timing needs to be special. Very special. So I did an attempt at replication. And you can see it works best when I do that flick. Sort of like a quick return mechanism. Now this thing's rocking all over the place. It's not a very good attempt. Um, I think I should try again. And I think I'm missing a lever up here. But I didn't know that. Um, this drawing is very good. These drawings are all very good, but how do you know they're accurate? So there's a lot of confusion surrounding it. If you try to go into the theory, you'll get confused. Never mind the theory. The theory is not important. This thing works on on feel, not by theory. So this idea that there's all these gears like this, mm, I doubt it, seriously doubt it, because each one of those, even if you had bushings instead of bearings, there's still a lot of resistance. I doubt a piece of string is going to turn all that constantly. So you have some very impressive replications, like this guy. Um, and he puts this great big giant motor. It's close here, it's close, but it's not over Unity. And he does some other things which, you know, I've tried. I've tried stuff like this, these big spinning weights, all these bearings you know, idler bearings. These things suck up power like you wouldn't believe. They really do. Bearings, weights, a lot of air resistance, a lot of friction. That's just how it is. These types of generators, um, yeah, notoriously inefficient. Notoriously inefficient. But, can't say I haven't done similar things. And to take a lot of classes from uh, the professionals before I knew anything about anything. Uh, still don't know much about anything. So let's go back to the presentation. Okay, tie rod ends. You can see in the photo, looks similar. got to be tie rod ends. So you can see in the photo, sorry, in the video, which I had open here. There's this little rotational thing and it's oscillating back and forth. It's painful to see. 
because there's other things interfering with it. But it basically proved David query right. Um, almost right. So, like I says, um, let's let's go to this photo over here. Input lever, lever mover, right? Freely moving. Now, where's my? Okay, so a little bit more levers. It looks like tie rod. We don't know exactly. It doesn't matter exactly. It just matters that what you're doing works. So those subtle little differences make the difference between not working. You did a marvelous job, but gravity motors are unlike ordinary machines. Everything has to be freely moving and they mess with your mind. They're low power so you don't know if it's really working. And then when you put a motor on it, it doesn't work. So you think, well, maybe it never worked. And then you tear the whole thing apart. So don't tear the whole thing apart. Keep working on it. Understand the timing is tricky. It's special. And uh, when you get discouraged, go back to Skinner. Work for him, it can work for you. So that's it. The mystery, it's been solved. Remember to leave a negative comment, dislike the video, and unsubscribe. Good luck on your applications.